Hey, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to another It's Gawa deck tech video. Today we are going to be taking a look at my Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, uh, colorless Eldrazi deck. So uh, Ulamog is a 10-10, obviously legendary creature Eldrazi. When you cast Ulamog, uh, the Ceaseless Hunger, exile two target permanents, indestructible. Whenever Ulamog attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library. So it's a pretty, pretty insane card. But um, before we hop into this deck tech, I just wanted to say thank you. I am beyond thankful for the um, for the support and feedback that I saw. A bunch of you guys commented. A lot of people liked. People subscribed. But I just wanted to say I'm very, very thankful because it's been almost two and a half or three years since I uploaded and we're almost at 500 views on that video which is absolutely insane but yeah I just wanted to give a little shout out to you guys because you make these things a lot more special and make me actually want to continue to you know post on this YouTube channel and you know go further in this but anyways enough with that you know lovey-dovey stuff towards you wonderful people today we're going to get into the Ulamog deck so we're going to start off with the lands first. If I can cut the lands. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So, to start off with the lands, we start off, let's do, let's start from here. We start with 16 basic wastes. In my area particularly, these wastes are like gold. <laughs> they're so hard to find um but i have 16 of them so that's good 16 wastes uh this this deck consists of 35 lands because you obviously need a lot of mana to be casting these big heavy eldrazis so we have mirror pool uh we have ruins of orin wreath they have the abilities at the bottom there but i will just give it so you guys can still read it we have cloud post we have mired landscape we have Glimmer Post, Sanctum of Ugin, Cryptic Caves, Eldrazi Temple, one that you should definitely pick up if you're wanting to make a Eldrazi deck. Same with this one, Shrine of Forsaken Gods. Just leave that there for a second so you guys can read that. Uh, Blink Moth Well, Burial Ruins, uh, Zalfrin Void, I never know how to say that. <laughs> Spawning Bed, Radiant Fountain, Unknown Shores, Temple of the False God, and we have all three of the Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower. So yeah, that is all the lands, consists of 35 lands. Uh, if you guys wanted to take a you know closer look, you could just pause the video, or uh, I will have the deck list down in the description, like always. So yeah. Let's start off the top here. So to start it off with the creatures, we have Kozlik's Pathfinder. Target creatures can't block Kozlik's Pathfinder this turn. And it's a 6 mana drop of 5-5. Five, five. There's really heavy hitting creatures in this deck, which is actually why I love it. Uh, we have the Unstable, Obsolete. You just add 1 mana. 7 colorless, Sacrifice Unstable, Destroy Target Permanent. Very good for removing stuff. We have Oblivion Sour. When you cast Oblivion Sour, target opponent exiles the top four cards of his or her library. Then you put any number of land cards that player owns, exiled on the battlefield under your control. So, I mean, this would be good if, like, you did have a colorless deck and you guys, like, your party or pod was all running, like, kind of the same colors. But, I mean, you still could use those lands for um, colorless. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We have Emrakul, the Promise End. It costs one less to cast for each card type, so, you know, sorcery, instant, creature, uh, artifact, enchantment, you know, those. When you cast Emrakul, you gain control of target player, or target opponents during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. Flying Tramp Protection from Instance, 13, 13, 13. Basically, you just do that, and you just take someone's turn, and you screw up their whole game plan, and yeah. <laughs> Codes like the Great Distortion. Whenever you cast Codes like the Great Distortion, you have fewer than seven cards in hand, draw equal to the difference. Um, Menace, discard a card with converted mana, cost X counter target spell. So it's really good to have Codes like, because Codes like can just counter stuff, like even if you don't have many like counter spells in this, because Colorless doesn't have a crazy amount. 
We have the Double Masters 2022 Ulamog Infinite Gyre, one of my favorite cards I do have, like the art wise. Uh, when you cast a spell, destroy target permanent. He's indestructible. Annihilator 4. Whenever Ulamog the Infinite Gyre is put into the graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles the graveyard into the library. Really good if you're having a long game. I will say the thing about the Ulamog deck is it's sometimes really hard to get going if you don't have the proper artifacts. But I mean, as long as you have the proper artifacts and stuff, you play that Ulamog and you just shuffle everything back in if people are just destroying your stuff. So, yeah. We have Kozlik Butcher of Truth. When you cast this spell, draw four cards, Annihilator four. So if you guys don't know what Annihilator is, I kind of just skipped over it. But uh, this creature tax, defending player, sacrifices four permanents. So that's before blockers or anything are even, like, uh, announced. So, <laughs> and when Kozlik Butcher of Truth is put into the graveyard for anywhere, its owner shuffles their library. So another one of those big cards. The one of, I think, two zero drops, we have Mox Opal. Metalcraft, add one of any color to your mana pool, activate this ability if you control three or more artifacts. I actually found something out about Mox Opal. Uh, Mox Opal does count. So if you have like two artifacts and you put Mox Opal out, Mox Opal is technically an artifact, so you can then tap it. Deceiver of Form, at the beginning of your combat turn, reveal the top card of your library. If a creature card reveal this way, you may have creatures you control other than Deceiver Form copies. So you just make copies. So like, for example, there's one... The twins in here where when it comes in you make a 10 10 eldrazi so you just basically just make everyone 10 10 eldrazi's those abilities will activate so it'll make more 10 10 eldrazi's we have the uh sky scanner which is a flying when sky scanner is a battlefield draw card just card draw eldrazi conscriptions enchanted creature Enchanted Creature gets plus 10, plus 10, and has Trample and Annihilator 2. So that can stack. So if you have a, something with Annihilator 4, put Annihilator 2, it becomes Annihilator 6. Just insane. <laughs> this little guy here, he just, a Kozlix Channeler, just tap for two colorless. We have Not of This World, counter target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control. Not of This World costs 7 less to cast of a target spell or ability that targets a creature you control with 7 power or greater. So... Basically, just cast it for free if it's hitting something that's seven mana or above. Little golden egg. When golden egg enters the battlefield, draw a card. One, sacrifice golden egg at one mana. Or two, you gain three life. We have the sandstone oracle. When sandstone oracle enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than, your, than you, draw cards equal to the difference. We have the little defender. He's a 1-4, sacrifice Wildfield Scarecrow, search your library for up to two basic lands and reveal them and put them into your hand. So it's really good because, you know, sometimes with this deck too, I know you have such like big amount of lands, but I mean, if you end up like missing some land drops, just sack him <laughs> and grab some lands. Scry 2, then draw a card for introduction to prophecy. We have the Universal Solvent, sac so it's a one drop, but seven sacrifice destroy target permanent we have mirror of forebears so it comes into play you choose a creature type so you choose like eldrazi one until end of turn mirror of forebears comes copy of target creature you control the chosen type except it's an artifact in addition so you could just have like ulamog out you cop use mirror of forebears copy ulamog and the rest is history <laughs> we have soul ring come on you have to have soul ring in a colorless deck conducted of ruin when you cast uh, Conduit of Ruin, you may search your library for a colorless creature card, convert a mana cost 7 or greater, reveal it and shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. The first creature spell you cast each turn costs 2 or less. So for example, if you went and you fetched out, um, I don't know, let's say Kozlik, you take Kozlik, Kozlik then would just cost you 8, or like Emrakul would cost you like uh, 11. So I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's nothing crazy, but it's pretty cool. We have Ruin Processor. When you cast Ruin Processor, you may put a card an opponent owns from exile into, into that player's graveyard. If you do, gain five life. It's just good for life gain. Uh, Bane of Balajid. Whenever Bane of Balajid attacks, defending player exiles two permanents he or she controls. Just a mean card. <laughs> uh, sp Spile Contortion. Jeez, I butchered that name. Uh, target creature gets plus three, minus three. So just very good for if someone has, you know, a certain amount of health, you just minus them. <laughs> so we have Dreamstone Hedron. Add three to your mana pool. Sacrifice Hedron. Draw three cards. Just a little, nice little card. 
Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land, and then when he dies, you can draw a card. We have Breaker of Armies. All creatures have to block Breaker of Armies, and which is crazy because you just basically take blockers out of everyone and then you just swing. So right here is actually a combo that I like to use in this deck. So Basalt Monolith, add three colors, mana pool, does not untap normal during your untap phase. You may spend three. So you'd play this, you would have rings of the right hearth, and you'd want to have a floating mana. So basically, you would copy copy this, this ability, which would then untrigger this, which then would cost one. So you would net one floating mana, and you would just keep doing this, just getting infinite colorless mana. So then with the infinite colorless mana, you would use the Staff of Domination, which you could gain one life, untap target creature, tap target creature, draw a card. So you could pretty much draw your whole deck and then gain one life, or gain like infinite life. We have Ulamog's Crusher, Annihilate 2, tax each combat if able. We have Mind Stone, add 1. We have Mana Crypt, add 2. We have Ulamog's the Spoilers. Edges of Battlefield you may put two cards your opponent's own from exile into their owner's graveyards. If you do, Ulamog enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. So uh becomes a nine-nine, which is really good. Walker of Waste. This basically gets plus one plus one for every waste that you have. So we'll just say, you know, you have all like 16 year wastes out, he becomes a big number. <laughs> we have Endbringer. Untap Endbringer during each other player's untap step. Endbringer deals one damage to target creature or player. Target creature can't attack or block this turn. Draw a card. It's just a very good one for tapping people down or just drawing cards. Artisan of Kozlek. When you cast Artisan of Kozlek, you may return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. We have Sponsor of Ulamog. This one's a crazy one, a 10 drop. You can put 0-1 colorless where you just get the Eldrazi's that give you mana. Or you can pay 20 and cast any number of Eldrazi cards. So if you just had proxies, for example, of like cards, because if you don't want to spend all the money to buy a whole bunch of different ones, you could just have like a million Ulamogs and just put them out. <laughs> we have Spina Isha. When Spina Isha enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When Spina Isha is put into a graveyard, return Spina Isha to its owner's hand. We have Ugin. Basically... You want to just basically look at him for his colorless spells cost two colorless less. Weeping or war warping whale. So, you know, just destroy or exile, counter target sorcery spell. You put a plus one, plus one. We have endless one, enters a battlefield with uh, X plus one, plus one counter. So he's for X cost, so you just cast it. We have gruesome slaughter until end of turn. Colors, creatures you control, gain, tap, this creature deals damage equal to its power. So again, 10, put it in. Just say you have um, the thingy that gives them plus 2, plus 2, and trample. So you would just tap it, 12-12, to... Uh, you just you just basically to a creature, which is just... It's okay. Eldrazi, Devastator, Trample, he's an 8-9. We have Matter Reshaper, which... He dies, you reveal the top card of your library. You may put that card on the battlefield if it's a permanent card with converted mana, three or less. All is dust. This is one that my friends get so pissed off at me for running because each per each player sacrifices all color permanents he or she controls, which you wouldn't have to just because you are not running colorless. Or you're running colorless, which is not considered a color. So, And now, I'm just going to pick this stack up, make this a bit easier. We have Spare Supplies. The so Spare Supplies enter the battlefield. Tap when Spare Supplies enters the battlefield. Draw a card. Meteor Golem enters the battlefield. Destroy target non-land permanent opponent controls. This is my favorite card. This is probably one of the most busted cards in this deck. So colors creatures you control get plus two plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for mana, add an additional colorless. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. So basically, even if per like for example, uh, Mana Crypt, you tap Mana Crypt for two, it'd be three. Soul Ring would be three. Uh, Temple of the False Gods would be three. You tap it again, it'd be four. So it just gets crazy. Landfall, whenever land is battle for your control, pay two. You could draw a card. We have Mimic that. We have Warden, so it just tapped, basically tapped to add to your mana pool. 
This is the twins I was talking about. Whenever you cast a spell, create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. Lightning Graves, equip creature as Shroud and Haste. I usually put that on Ulamog because it's just cheese. Crashing Drawbridge, so you just basically tap it and control uh, creature control, gain haste until the end of turn, which is just really good. Lore Seeker Stone, draw three cards. Um, it's cost one more for each card you have in your hand, so it's good if you only have like one. So, Worn Power Stone, add two colors to your mana pool. Again, if you have Forsaken Monument, it'd be three. Eldrazi Mimic, basically every time a creature comes in under your control, you could just copy the power. Uh, enters the battlefield, draw a card, Alchemist Vile. Titan's Presence, an additional cost to cast Titan's Presence, reveal a colorless creature card from your hand, exile target creature if its power is less or equal. So again, you could reveal like uh, Emrakul, which is a 13-13, and you would do 13 damage to someone. Like 13 to remove their creature. Hedron, add two to your mana pool, sacrifice, draw two cards. I love this card. It's a four drop. One tap, destroy all artifact creatures and enchantments, which would affect you, which kind of sucks, but you know. Skittering Evasion. Put five, oh, one colorless Eldrazi creature tokens onto the battlefield. They have sacrifices creature. Add one to your mana pool. Mystic Forge. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast top card of your library if it's an artifact or colorless non-land card. We have Ugin. Ugin the Spirit Drag deals three damage to target creature or player. Exile each Permanent with converted mana cost X or less with one or more colors. You gain seven life, draw seven cards, and put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Insane ability. Because you just keep dealing damage and just get that ability. And the final card is It That Betrays, Nihilator 2. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So yeah, that is my colorless Eldrazi uh, Ulamog deck. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys did, you know, learn something from this deck. Hopefully, you know, you guys uh, end up building this deck or something or, you know, doing something along the lines. But again, all I wanted to say is I'm super, super thankful for all the support and, you know, all the support just makes me want to keep going and doing more of these videos. I have about three more decks that I want to go through and then we'll start hopping on to different things like pack openings and stuff. But yeah, I just want to say thank you. So with that being said, guys, remember, if it ain't Gawa gang, it's no gang. I love y'all. Stay safe and peace.